This is a quick demonstration of inter-region bandwidth on Azure when going between Central US, which is in Iowa, and East US2 in Virginia. We're going between two virtual machines in VNets and our connectivity method between the two private link. So let's explain briefly the flow of traffic here. I've got my VM over here. It's a, a very large SKU, so it supports up to 24 gigabits per second of bandwidth. And this is going to target a local private endpoint in the same subnet. That private endpoint is mapped over via private link to a private link service in another virtual network, which is then mapped to a load balancer, which has got a HA ports rule set up pointing to another virtual machine, which is the same size, very large, which also supports very large network throughput. In my testing, the VNets have got the same IP ranges. As we know, private link is agnostic of IP address space on the VNets. So this could be used for intercompany, uh, business to business, could be used within the same company, between departments. The customer use case that drove this demonstration was actually a customer that had VNets in Central US and East US2, and they had sort of hub spoke networks in the middle, and we had express route going between the two and firewalls and gateways, etc. And there was a layer three routed network path between the two endpoints, but it had appliances and gateways, etc., which constrained the throughput and also were used for other things such as hybrid scenarios and V2V traffic. But there was a requirement here for a very large throughput use case between endpoints which trust each other but needed to go across the Microsoft backbone in an efficient way. So the options were you know, use the existing infrastructure or we could have connected these two VNets by VNet peering. In their use case, the VNets have different IP address bases. But the use case I want to demonstrate here is using private link. And maybe this is of more interest to a customer if they want to keep the connectivity more restricted. So private link in this scenario will only give connectivity in one direction. So the source has to do the pulling. And it's, it's only going to give connectivity through to whatever this private link service is mapped to, and therefore whatever the load, ba load balancer is pointing at, is not going to give sort of carte blanche access to the entire virtual network in both directions. So in that sense, it's more restricted. But I'll quickly show you the setup in the portal, and then we'll demonstrate the throughput. Okay, so walking left to right, this is my source VM. You can see it's got a very large SKU here, and it's got this IP address range. Inside of the same subnet, I've got a private endpoint which is mapped, as we can see, to the private link resource or PLS destination. And I'll walk through where that's uh, sort of pointing at. But this is the ingress to private link. This is the source that's in the same VNet over here on the left. And then we go across to the private link service in the red environment. So let me, let me go across to the red environment now. Over here, I've got a private link service, which is kind of the egress point for private link. And we can see that it's got one private endpoint connection approved, which is my blue private endpoint. It's using a subnet here for the, the NAT, so traffic will appear like it's coming from this IP address, not from the blue. And then it's mapped to a load balancer in the same virtual network. We'll have a look at the load balance config. It's got a, a simple health probe that's probing on port 80. So my virtual machine here in red is, is listening on port 80 to make sure the health probe is, is active. And then inside the load balancer rule, I've enabled the option for HA ports, which means on the virtual machine, I don't have to care about the application port. You know, if the application decides to use different ports whenever the transfer is initiated, that's going to be okay. And we'll see that in a second with my throughput testing application, NTTTCP, I'm not specifying a port on the, on the spin up and we'll see that it's still successful. Okay, I flipped over to a Bastion SSH session here on my red destination virtual machine. I'm going to start the NTTTCP process. If you're not familiar with this, it's just a network throughput testing application, very lightweight. 
you can see it starts off with default settings of being heavily multi-threaded, which is important when we're testing bandwidth, especially over a larger distances with latency. You know, these regions are about a thousand kilometers apart. So we're going to have intrinsically some latency on the network to, to deal with there. And now I'll jump to my source virtual machine. And I'm going to start the sending process with the toggle for 10.005. Now 10.005 is, if we remember from our portal walkthrough, it's my private endpoint over here. So I'm basically saying on my source, start sending data and go via this private endpoint. So we can see straight away, we're getting very good amount of throughput here. I'll leave that running for a second. Okay, I left that test running for a little bit. We peaked around about uh, 22 gigabits per second. So roughly what the virtual machine should give us. And um, see here, the throughput was very healthy. Obviously be very careful when running these tests because you will chew through a lot of network bandwidth very quickly and private link is costed on a, a per gigabyte throughput as well as uh, hourly costs for the, the private endpoint itself. Anyway, like I said, a, a very quick test there and demonstration, but hopefully that gives you some ideas on, on how private link can enable these sort of highly secured inter-region, inter-vnet scenarios whilst also giving you the throughput you might need for big data workloads uh, and maybe give you the ability to take the high throughput off your existing network infrastructure, such as hub and spokes, express route, virtual WANs that might already link together your VNets in different regions, or perhaps you want to use it for a B2B scenario when you're working with other customers running on top of Azure. Anyway, thanks for watching.